Hello, it is Sunday the 24th of September 2023 and the sun has come out. So it's time for my three day update on my moon phase gardening schedule and that will cover Monday the 25th of September, Tuesday and up till Wednesday the 27th of September 2023. So let's start. Okay, so Monday, the 25th of September, 2023, we are back at Fruits Day again. And Fruits Day covers things like what I'm harvesting. Tomatoes, let me show you. Let's start with harvesting first. Behind me in the greenhouse there, I've just harvested some very nice tomatoes. These are just turning. Now, if you saw my last video that I did, um, which covers the end of this week, I talk about tomatoes and I talk about when I actually pick them. And I pick them when they start this turning, what they call turning. This variety here is called black crim. So it's actually got quite a way to go until it gets to the color that we want. Um, but I take them off now. This one's a little bit more established here, but see, we've still got this light colouring at the bottom. I still pick it, and this one is one of my cookers. This is called Harry's Italian Plum. Again, I've got some green on the side, and I pick them like that. Um, tomatoes will not actually um, benefit, I suppose, any more for ripening by leaving them on the plant, maybe for flavour but not necessarily for ripening. So at this time of year where I'm, I'm starting to cut back most of my tomatoes, I pick them now and I just bring them inside in the heat and I put them on a windowsill and they will ripen. So that's, there you go. That's my part of my harvesting. Right, let's go through my categories again. So every moon phase day, I go through these categories and it just keeps me disciplined and it keeps me on schedule with what I need to do in the garden. I don't ever get any kind of overwhelmed because I know, okay, fruit stay may only be for one or two or three days. And so I cover sowing and transplanting, weeding and maintenance, harvesting, here, that's my tomatoes, and also feeding. So, and it might um, cover quite a lot of things within that. And I always choose what I'm going to do within that particular category. So for sowing at this time of year, I don't sow any fruits at all. So that's a very easy category. <laughs> for transplanting, I don't transplant any fruits as well for this time of the year. So that's a very easy category. We've covered the harvesting with my tomatoes here. So for my maintenance and weeding part of Fruits Day um, for Monday, the 25th of September, uh, it's time for me now to attend to my peach tree and my nectarine tree. The nectarine tree looks much better than the peach tree. This is starting to go its kind of autumn colour and the leaves are starting to fall off. But there are two things I want to do with these plants. And one is, see how pot bound they are. And this one is particularly and I will get it out. Bear with me. Oh, yeah. Really pop out. Okay, so I'm going to get it out. I have to repot it. I wouldn't normally repot um, a peach or a nectarine this time of year, but I'm going to have to repot it because um, they're both pot bound. The nectarine, I'll just show you that. It's in this size pot. Now I know this is pot bound as well, but I actually, let me see, is there a name on this? No, there's no name. So again, it's a variety, I don't know. I'm just gonna come closer. See underneath? That's pot bound. So I potted this in springtime. I potted it on. It was in a much smaller pot and um, it needs potting on again. But I got a fantastic crop of nectarines from this tree. It already had the nectarines, the fruit on them when, when the tree came to me, 
but it, they were absolutely beautiful and really delicious. So that's, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to repot these and then the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to take them under cover this year. And okay, so the reason I am doing that is for peach leaf curl. I don't need this on anymore. We have a lot of problems with peach leaf curl in this country because it's a very damp atmosphere. Peach leaf curl, you will not miss it. When you see it on the plant, the leaves are all puckered. They go a kind of bronzy color. They look awful. I am bringing these in undercover and I'm very lucky because I've got this big um, purpose-built greenhouse behind me. So I can bring it in undercover. If you have a small greenhouse, it's all, also good to do that. Um, if you have like a lean to, it's also good to do that. It's not because I want them to stay warm. It's because peach leaf curl develops. Let me try and show you. It's always windy here. Um, when you have, here we go. There, here, just there is your new leaf bud. If you get rain and moisture into those leaf buds, they can then develop into peach leaf curl. And so through the winter and especially in spring, if you've got a very kind of moist, damp spring, it just helps that peach leaf curl, that bacterial, um, that fungal disease to come. So I am going to put these, repot them now, I'll feed them as well. So that's part of my feeding routine. Give them a little feed, not too much. And when I say repot, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the next size. That's it. Because like I said, I don't normally repot anything at this time of year. It gives it they're a little bit harder for them to get going in soil, especially if you leave the soil very damp. So I'm going to watch my watering as well. Peaches and nectarines don't really like to be kept really soggy. You have to kind of keep an eye on them but you can grow them in pots you will have to feed them um, you will have to water them uh, so yeah that's my maintenance for fruits on fruits day monday 25th of september so on tuesday the 26th of september 2023 we then move on to roots day and we only have one day of Roots Day. We had one day of Fruits Day on Monday, one day of Roots Day on Tuesday. So I am not sowing anything this time. All of my sowings that I did of my onions are doing really well. So I, at the moment, I'm okay. So I'm gonna leave it, no sowing. However, I do have some transplanting to do. And this trough here in front of me, um, I've just finished harvesting some carrots from this trough. So this trough here, I am going to transplant out. I've got some extra radish that I'm gonna transplant out. Um, I've got three, two to three radishes per cell and they should do really well in here. I like to grow my radish and like I said everything in modules because then I can control slugs, I can control all the pests. Most of the time when I start things off in modules I start them in my veggie pods um, and then I've got a net over the top so I don't have to worry about pests. This time of year I've also got them on um, some staging on the side of my greenhouse, my little green greenhouse is behind you um, and that's where I've got staging. So to plant radish Radish is quite interesting because I find it quite temperamental. It makes no difference whether I plant it direct or whether I actually plant it from modules. But what I have found is to plant radish properly, I've just found this, to plant radish properly, and I'm just gonna stand up for this, is to plant them deep, as deep as you possibly can. So I've just already popped that one out, as you can see, see the root structure on that? Really good, but have a look at that. I've got very long stems. I am wanting to plant up to here where the actual greenery starts. So I pop it in as deep as I possibly can and I just have the leaves sticking out of the top. Let me show you. There is no red stem at all. 
Um, and because they're in threes, because I multi-sew in threes, I don't have to worry too much about space. Yeah, yeah. if I was direct sewing, as I have in the veggie pod, and I will show you actually some of the radishes that I've got um, growing in the red veggie pod, because they're doing quite well. What's that? A worm. Um, I, again, I would be thinning out. I like to thin out because um, otherwise you get a lot of radish. Radishes, like I said, it's very interesting because you'll get radishes that um, actually bulb up and swell and then you get a lot of radishes that don't. And so the ones that don't, they're never going to come to anything, those ones. The ones that don't, I just pull out. So let's go and have a look in the veggie pod and have a look at my radishes. So here I am at the veggie pod. Let's have a look at these radishes that I sowed. Who knows? Because I never put a date on anything. <laughs> Quite a while back. Actually, I, I have started to put dates on things. So this is a variety called Celesta. And I have been thinning out all of the radishes here until I found ones that were swelling. If you look here, you can see that most of them are swelling here. And here in particular, I have some very nice ones coming. So that's good. Okay, so that's that. Then I thought, oh, let's just sow some radish breakfast ones, which are the long ones, which actually this time of year is not a good idea to sow, but I did. And I have a few that are swelling. You can see here. But most of them do this type of thing. If a radish does this, let me just pull some out, Mr. Cameraman. I'll show you. If a radish does that, it's not going to become a radish. So that's what you need to thin out. And I've had to thin out a lot of these um, French breakfast, I can't even say it, breakfast radishes, because like I said, it's the wrong time of year to grow them. They're really good spring radishes. But let's pick one of these round ones. These are nice. Look, that is beautiful. Celesta. Seed by Mr. Fothergills. <laughs> this is for my weeding, maintenance and feeding on Tuesday, the 26th of September, 2023. Okay, so at the end of winter, I got some rhizomes. I bought some rhizomes from Wilco. Wilco that is no longer Wilco, which is a little, very, well, a little, very unfortunate. I've tried growing ginger before from supermarket bought ginger and also just ginger bought from an Asian, Asian store as well. I think what they must do is they must put a retardant on these gingers because, okay, they do actually um, sprout a little bit, but I didn't get hardly any growth and hardly any ginger from these particular rhizomes I've tried. I've tried uh, all sorts of ways of growing them. I tried soaking them, I tried, you know, all sorts. So um, this year, like I said, I went to Wilco's and that there is just one pot of ginger. I've got two pots like this of ginger that is growing from the Wilco's ginger and it is absolutely fantastic. Ginger is very easy to grow. If you're interested in how I grow ginger, I have had a look back on my videos and I did actually do a video about a year ago, or just over a year ago because it was at the end of winter, um, of how to grow ginger. What I will do in the moon phase gardening as well is when it's time to grow ginger again, I will show you how I grow ginger. But if you just want to go back and have a look and see what I did, then have a look. Um, the other thing, so I had two rhizomes left and that's one and the other one's over on the windowsill so they've come good too amazing ginger's <laughs> very easy to grow the other thing that i am growing which i'm very impressed with and this is actually store-bought um turmeric this is turmeric and this is doing really well too um it looks a little bit dry and a little bit knackered but i'm going to repot it like i said and i will give it a feed 
Actually, I may not even repot it. I might just give it a feed. Um, so these plants are going to be coming in with me uh, because I'd, I'd like to keep them going as long as I possibly can. So when we start getting the frosts, this greenhouse is going to be too cold for them. They're going to come in with me and I'm going to use them as house plants and um, keep an eye on them, especially the turmeric. Ginger and turmeric, you can eat the leaves as well if you want to. Um, beautiful. When you rub your hands up along them, the smell is fantastic, especially the turmeric. I also have a pot of galangal, so you will actually see, if you go back and have a look at that video, you will see the galangal that I've got. Now, this galangal I've had for quite a long time. It used to be on my magic windowsill in the kitchen, uh, but it's gotten too big. So now it's actually on the balcony outside of the kitchen, and I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to um, give that a good feed too. I want to keep that as long as I possibly can because it's taken me a long time to get that gal and gal to go to get going. It's not like normal ginger. So yes, that is my um, weeding, maintenance and feeding for Roots Day on Tuesday. <laughs> so on Wednesday the 27th of September 2023, it is Flowers Day. So it's been an interesting week. Monday was fruits, Tuesday was roots, Wednesday is flowers. And I've got dirty fingers. Uh, okay, so for my sowing, I am continuing to sow some hardy annuals. And in particular, I am going to be doing Gypsophila and Larkspur. They're the two hardy annuals that I am going to sow. Then I have got two um, flowering vegetables, I suppose you can call them. Remember last week I talked about um, sowing some more cauliflower because I had problems with woolly aphid. Well, I sowed one tray of um, 15 cauliflowers and they are the Orkney variety. And I'm going to sow another tray just to be sure because when I was... Um, weeding around my cauliflowers and all my cabbages and my brassicas I noticed that the woolly aphid was getting into some new ones so I'm going to do another tray another either 10 or 15 more um, transplants modules of Orkney and to that mix I am going to throw in my favorite purple variety called graffiti I've got some purple over at the allotment and they're called Violetto or Violetta. I don't like the way they're looking. They look as though they're going to bolt. So I'm going to go back. This was a little experiment that I did. I thought I would try these um, seeds and oh, I don't like them. So let's go back to my favourite, which is graffiti. And I'm also going to sow about 10 of those. So then I'm going to have enough flowering brassicas, hopefully, to take over any of those that don't make it because of the woolly aphid. I don't have any problems with caterpillars because, of course, I net everything. So um, that is my sowing for Flowers Day. So for my transplant on Flowers Day, um, this is a really nice time of year to start changing over your bedding. Um, I've got some hanging baskets that are outside. I'm just outside my back door and I've got some hanging baskets. I've already planted one up with some really pretty little violas. I'll show you in a minute. And I've got this one here. And I do really like this time of year, violas and pansies. And these are some little violas here that are going to do, look really, they're just a mix, a colorful mix. And they're going in, in this pot. Um, I'll just take one out, I'll show you how pretty they are. So if you go down to the garden center, I think actually, I think I picked these up from B&Q. They had a sale or something on. Look, oops, isn't that pretty? Beautiful colors. And pansies and violas, especially violas, um, do really, really well in any kind of basket or trough or anything like that this time of year. So that's gonna be my hanging baskets. That's going in there. And here is the little viola that I was telling you about. I've just dead it, dead headed it, but isn't it pretty? 
and that's going to do really well. Just keep deadheading and you're going to have beautiful flowers for autumn and winter. For my weeding and maintenance on Flowers Day on Wednesday, I have chosen to start pruning back my climbing roses. This rose here is called Crown Princess Margarita and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's this kind of apricot colour. It does beautifully um, all year really. It's a re repeat flowering. Um, and it's gorgeous. Behind it, this one here, that's looking a little bit more, not so good, that's a rambler and that's called Weilkenblau. Weilken so I am just going to take off these old flowers because um, deadheading is always very good. But what I'm going to do now is, last winter I chopped this back a lot and I um, had a very nice structure to the actual plant. So I'm not going to prune it as hard as I do say in February, January, February. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take off all these kind of long bits, the bits, so anything that is flowered, I'm gonna take back and I'll probably take it back by half, I would think for the moment. And um, let me look at these, they're finished as well. So again, let's take it back by half. And then, oh, these are terrible, terrible secateurs. Um, then, in the um, winter, I then take it right back to the structure that I've made. So I've turned it into kind of like a fan structure. Um, anything that has been um, eaten, see here, this is finished, this should have been deadheaded, this one here. So again, we take it back. I think, yes, I've got, I've got the wrong secateurs. Um, and so I'm going to start doing that and just, you know, take it back slowly, slowly. And then when I've um, reduced it, like I said, all these long wispy bits by half, in the winter, to prune roses properly, you take anything that's out that's dead, and I can see there's a few bits in here that are dead, and then you start pruning it back. Roses, I don't think you can kill a rose actually, they love to have just checking the microphone's working because there's always something going overhead. Um, they love to be pruned back, so I'm going to do that. The rambling rose as well, that's going to get a really good prune because, again, all the new growth I will tie in. I will take off all the um, flowers as well, deadhead properly. But instead of just deadheading back to a leaf node, I take it just back a little bit further. And that is my maintenance on um, Flowers Day on Wednesday. As for feeding, uh, I might give that those bedding plants a little bit of a feed, but other than that, nothing else is gonna get fed. All my brassicas are looking okay at the moment. Right, so that covers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'm Susie B from Susie B Living, and this is my moon phase gardening schedule. So I hope that you're um, on board and doing it. It's really interesting because um, by doing this um, series, there've been quite a lot of people that have introduced themselves to me as moon phase gardeners, and uh, their successes that they've had, especially, well, mainly with germination, because it is, that's mainly why I do it, because because it is absolutely fantastic for germination. The other thing that it's great for is just keeping me on track. I have my little categories that I do everything in and um, it's, it's really good fun. So I will see you on Wednesday night. That is, what are we today? 27th, Wednesday the 27th, Wednesday evening. And that will be the schedule for the rest of the week. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up or subscribe and you can moon phase garden with me. So I'll see you later for the rest of the week. Bye.